Before we start digging deeper into tree data structures and algorithms, we need to cover some basic maths around binary trees and tree data structures in general. This will help us appreciate the advantages of using a tree data structure in an algorithm. So let's go. Now before I scare you away with terms like trees and graphs, we've actually already looked at a graph on this particular channel when we looked at the linked list data structure. A linked list is actually an example of a graph data structure. A graph is nothing more than a set of nodes pointing to other nodes. In the case of a linked list, we have our head node pointing to the next node via its next member and so on and so forth till we eventually arrive at a null value. Now a graph is a very general data structure and it includes pretty much any data structure we have nodes pointing to other nodes. So by this definition, the linked list data structure that we looked at is a graph. Now, a tree data structure is just a specialization of the graph with a few restrictions. And you could argue that the linked list data structure is a tree as well. But let's look at a more general representation of what people imagine when they think of a tree. Fundamentally, the restrictions we impose on a graph for it to be considered a tree is that it must not contain any cycles. There is normally a node called the root. And from this root node, we can actually make our path to any other nodes within the tree. Now, in order to better analyze the mathematics around tree data structures, we will start off with a simpler tree than this one. There are two things that we will simplify. First, we will only consider a balanced tree. The tree that we are looking at right now is imbalanced. This is because we've added a few leaf nodes that are way off on one side without filling up the nodes that are further up within the tree. The other simplification that we will make is that we will consider only a binary tree. This tree that we have over here is not a binary tree as there are nodes that contain more than two children. In a binary tree, each node has only two children. So here is the reference completely balanced binary tree that we will use to analyze tree data structures. Now before we jump into any formulas, let's first analyze this tree a bit more to understand how the number of nodes grow within each level of the tree. Now just from visual observation of the tree, you can see that at level 0, we have one node resulting in a total count of 1. Within level 1, we have two nodes within that level, along with one node from the previous level resulting in a total of 3 nodes. Similarly, at level 2, we have 4 with 4 plus 3 giving us a total of 7. And at level 3, we have 8 nodes, which combined with the previous 7 result in a total of 15. Now we could continue, but this should be enough for us to understand a general pattern. Now the first thing that we can notice is that at each level, the number of nodes essentially double. So we start off at level 0 with one node, and then in level 1, we get 2, in level 2, we get 4, and so on. And this makes perfect sense because after all, this is a binary tree, and each node in the previous level essentially has two children resulting in double the number of nodes. And now the other observation that we can make that is perhaps not as obvious if you haven't experienced it before is that the total number of nodes in the previous level is actually 1 minus the number of nodes in the current level. We can see this in the relationship between 2 and 1, 4 and 3, and 8 and 7. Now armed with these observations, we can write the formula for the total at any given level as 2 to the power L, that is the current number of nodes, plus 2 to the power L minus 1, that is the number of nodes that we get from the previous total. As an example, consider level 3, where we have 8 current nodes, which is simply 2 to the power 3, combined with 7 nodes, which is 2 to the power 3 minus 1, from the previous level, resulting in a total number of nodes of 15. Now we can combine the two 2 to the power Ls to get 2 to the power L plus 1. Now we've been working with the zero based index for the level, but we can take this L plus 1 and come up with a new concept known as the height of a tree, which is simply going to be L plus 1. We just start our index at value 1. So with that, we have a nice relationship between the height of the tree versus the number of items that it can accommodate. Now why is this relationship useful? If you look at the tree data structure, quite commonly what we will be doing is you will be searching only between the height of the tree instead of going through all of the nodes within the tree. So if n is the number of nodes in the tree and h is the height, instead of having to look at n items, we would only need to look at h items. So let's figure out the equation for h. Right now we know the equation for n to be 2 to the power h minus 1. We simply flip the equation around to bring h on the left hand side, 
move minus 1 onto the right hand side and then take log on both sides to get just h on the left hand side. This gives us h is equal to log 2 of n plus 1. Now when we talk about algorithms, we really deal with exact equations and we normally talk about bigger notation because after all we don't take into consideration the differences in the different processes which if you don't take quantum computing into account is probably going to be a constant factor difference. So r h is equal to log 2 of n plus 1 is the same as o of h is equal to log of n. Note that big O does not care about that plus 1 or the base of that log. Now that's it for the analysis of a perfectly balanced binary tree, but let's go back and modify some of our assumptions to make this even more general for more tree data structures. The first thing that we will look at is a constant factor of imbalance. For example, this particular tree is twice as heavy on the left hand side versus the right hand side, which means that in the worst case scenario it's going to be twice as high than our perfectly perfectly balanced tree that we looked at in our previous example. Now if you can make the guarantee that it's never going to exceed twice as heavy imbalance on one side versus the other, then as far as big O algorithmic analysis is concerned, this tree is perfectly balanced, as big O does not care about constant factors like 2. Maintaining a maximum worst case imbalance essentially makes trees balanced as far as big O is concerned. And the other key assumption that we made for our tree is that it is a binary tree that is, each node has only two children. That is not an assumption that is true for many tree data structures out there. For example, here is a quad tree where each node has four children. And the only thing that will change in our analysis is that instead of log 2, we will end up with some form of log 4. Now, for those that are familiar with log functions, the difference between two log functions that have a different base is actually just a simple factor difference. For example, the difference between log 2 versus log 4 is this factor log 2 of 4. And as far as big O is concerned once more, it really doesn't care about a constant factor and therefore doesn't really care about log bases. And it will be the same as log of n that we saw previously. So to summarize, if you solve a problem using a tree data structure that is partially balanced and you only traverse the height of the tree, as far as your runtime is going to be concerned, it's going to be approximately log of the number of items in the tree. And if anybody asks you why this is a great thing, you can throw a few numbers. For example, you can say that the log 10 of 10 is 1 and the log 10 of 1000, which has three zeros, is going to be 3. Similarly, the log 10 of a million is going to be 6 and log 10 of a billion is going to be 9. So you can see that it is increasing extremely slowly. And the same is true for other log bases as well, because as we've discussed, the difference between two log functions that have a different base is a constant factor. So log 2 of a billion is still going to be approximately around 30. And that's all for this lesson. Smash the like and subscribe, turn your thoughts into comments, and I will see you in the next one.